dear students a very warm welcome to today's session of our 1000 plus previous year questions for UGC net English literature paper 2 right so we guys will be moving forward with the questions uh, as we all were covering in the previous lectures as well so hum log abhi filhal ke liye uh, we are dealing and catering to the unit of uh, British literature right so if we try to talk about British literature in the field of uh, English literature UGC net as you guys all know that the major with uh, weightage of the questions is there right wherein we see majority of the questions is mein se poochhe jate hain and we have ample of questions that's why abhi tak hamare sirf brit lit ke cover ho rahe hain and as the main aim of this particular course for you all is to make sure that each and every question is being discussed in a very greater detail along with the options which are also provided right so without any further ado Let's just begin with the first question here that is related to Edmund Spencer's work Colin Clouds Come Home Again is a fine example of what? What do you think is the right answer to this particular question? Try kijiye. Of course, we will be taking a look at the other options as well, right? The right answer is option D here. That is, it's a pastoral eclogue. It's a pastoral eclogue. राइट नाउ वेन वी ट्राई टू टॉक अबाउट एडमंड स्पेंसर पहले हम इन चीजों के बारे में भी देख लेते हैं सोनेट सीक्वेंस कोई भी हो सकता है पेट्रार्कन सोनेट शेक्सपीरियन सोनेट एक्सेट्रा कार्पीदियम का मतलब होता है सीज द डे यानी कि यू शुड मेक द मोस्ट ऑफ योर लाइफ इन ईच एंड एवरी डे यू शुड सीज इन ग्रैप द डे एंड द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू लिव योर लाइफ एट योर बेस्ट जॉर्जिक पोएट्री जो होती थी रूरल पोएट्री होती थी इफ यू ट्राई टू टॉक अबाउट इट इट सेलिब्रेट्स रूरल लाइफ एंड एग्रीकल्चर इट सेलिब्रेट्स रूरल लाइफ एंड एग्रीकल्चर Now coming to the point wherein we are going to be delving in greater detail with regards to Colin Clouds Come Home Again. First of all, if we uh, if we tend to see this particular work, it is uh, by Edmund Spencer, as we all know. कब आया था ये particular work? This work was published in the year fifteen ninety five. Note down the details, etc. Right, and along with we know that. एडमंड स्पेंसर के और भी बहुत सारे वर्क्स है जिसमें से द फेरी क्वीन इज रियली वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू गाइज शुड बी रीडिंग द समरी ऑफ द सेम अलॉन्ग विद कितने नाइट्स आते हैं उसमें एंड वॉट डू दोज नाइट्स रेप्रेजेंट राइट सो इट हैज बीन कॉल्ड द ग्रेटेस्ट पेस्टोरल क्लॉग इन द इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज क्या बोला गया इसको द ग्रेटेस्ट पेस्टोरल एक्लॉग इन द English language बोला गया है Colin Clouds come home again. Now wherein we see this name जो है this also occurs in some other work as well. John Skelton, Skeltonics जिन्होंने famous करा था during the age of Chaucer, he also had used this name Colin Cloud as a character, right? अब कुछ चीजें और इंपॉर्टेंट है अगर हम बात करते हैं कॉलिन क्लाउड्स कम होम अगेन हु वॉज इट डेडिकेटेड टू दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्क कॉलिन क्लाउड्स कम होम अगेन वॉज डेडिकेटेड टू सर वॉल्टर रेले क्यों डेडिकेट करा था वाई वाई डिड स्पेंसर डेडिकेट दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्क बिकॉज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट सर वॉल्टर रेले ने स्पेंसर को बहुत पैसा उधार पे दिया हुआ था सो स्पेंसर वॉज अंडर द इनफाइनाइट डेट ऑफ सर वॉल्टर रेले सो ही यू नो डेडिकेटेड दिस पोम टू हिम Now, as I was telling you, this particularly was a character. Colin Cloud was a particular character. इसके बारे में और details note down कीजिए. If we try to talk about Colin Cloud, it was previously. ये एक previously it was a character that was created by. created by john skeleton right john skeleton 
in his poem right in his poem 1523 mein right then this same character also appears in also appears in john gay's work the shepherd's week the shepherd's week in the year 1714 so it was inspired by john skeleton but this character again came during the age of pope in the year 1714 wherein we find john gay the beggar's opera wale writer he is one such person who uses the same character ka naam in his work the shepherd's week right then moving forward to the next question that we have who published the first collected edition of g m hopkins poems in 1918 to ye waise bhi separately if you read about him gerald menley hopkins was one such person who was not really famous during his lifetime theek hai so after he died his poems were collected by robert bridges and were published in the year 1918 this separately has also been asked as your previous year question that in which year robert bridges published g m hopkins's poems in a collected way right so we have here as the right answer as robert bridges right and we also see that a uh, g m hopkins jo hai he has been uh, known for developing certain things and i would want you to note down those things जी एम हॉपकिस जो थे ही फाउंडेड दीज और कॉइंड दीज टर्म्स आप लिख सकते हो ही फाउंडेड दीज फॉर्म्स लिख सकते हो वॉट फॉर्म्स एम आई ट्राइंग टू टॉक अबाउट नंबर वन वी बिकॉज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट ही वॉज रियली नोन फॉर दिस स्प्रंग रिदम स्प्रंग रिदम वॉट डज इट एक एक लाइन में डेफिनेशन नोट डाउन करते जाइए स्प्रंग रिदम रिफर्स टू राइटिंग पोएट्री राइटिंग पोएट्री इन द नेचुरल वे इन विच वी स्पीक जैसे हम बोलते हैं वैसे पोएट्री लिखी जाए वैसा स्प्रंग रिदम इन्होंने बनाया था ठीक है then we have the next point he also coined this beautiful word inscape which referred to inscape kisko refer karta tha inscape referred to the unique beauty the unique beauty or character or character of something of something like for example if we look at a flower and that flower is so pretty that is the in escape right koi aisi quality us cheez ki jo usko alag banati hai beautiful banati hai right let's just also try to think of a bright color ka blue bird now that blueness and the brightness in that blue color is going to serve as an impact on me that is in escape the unique beauty that only that bird has right that makes it different and special also the third term that is in stress now in stress with in stress he means the feeling slash energy you get when you notice something beautiful right for example let's just say you are sitting on a sea side and there's sunset sunset happen ho raha hai wahan pe and you are amazed and you are going beyond words you don't have words to explain that as well that is in stress in escape the unique quality of something which makes it special in stress the feeling you get while seeing something beautiful or pretty 
all right so these were three terms which were coined by gerard manley hopkins right and the poem the publisher of gm hopkins match the following mein bhi aaye hue hain so gm hopkins is publisher was robert bridges who published his collected poems in an anthology in the year 1918 right 1918 moving on pinter once admitted that he first became aware of the dramatic power of the pause from seeing a popular american comedian which one is he talking about the right answer is option c here jack benny ye options baki discuss karne wale nahi hai because these are straight forward sorts of questions but of course analysis of the question will be done theek hai jab hum harold pinter ki baat karte hain harold pinter absurdity sorts of plays etc he writes as well right in the post war period now coming to he has admitted that he saw or sensed some sort of the quality of pauses now what do we mean by that here agar hum baat karte hain jack benny naam ke comedian hai in america right comedian the in america so what he used to do was agar aap stand up comedy dekhte hoge aapne mahip singh bhi agar dekhe honge who is right now famous for his joke mummy kaisi hai right and uh, other comedians as well if you talk about zakir khan if you talk about abhishek upamanyu theek hai bahut sare stand up comedians hain so pinter ne ye quality of pause let's just say you are about to crack a joke that is reaching to its climax but then you took a pause so that the audience is in awe like what is going to come next right so that is the power of a pause which pinter took as an inspiration from a comedian named jack benny so pinter ne apne works mein in pauses ko jo hai unhone use kiya because according to pinter these pauses ye pauses jo hain these pauses could be building some sort of suspense some sort of mystery and will ask the audience to dig deeper meanings from what is being shown theek hai what is being shown on screen as well that is why he got inspiration from jack benny right next question which is the following is not true of the ideal state in thomas more's utopia now when we talk about thomas more's utopia utopia means nowhere a place of nowhere or an ideal place theek hai which exists nowhere as well right so what is not true the right answer is option c here there is only one religion guided by the principles of a benevolent a supreme being no this has not been mentioned in thomas more's utopia the other three options are ek bar dekhte hain baki options ko personal property money and vice are effectively abolished the root causes of crime ambition and political conflict are eliminated bilkul hai ye cheez in priesthood which includes some women is limited in number no talk about a supreme being has been done right agar ek bar hum aate hain if we try to talk about there is focus on religious tolerance religious tolerance hai of course religious tolerance ke upar baat kari gayi hai but no mention of a benevolent supreme being the utopians they are supposed utopians jo hain wo multiple beliefs rakh sakte hain matlab unke upar ye nahi kaha gaya ki tumhe yahi yahi single god ko you are supposed to believe right but 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 you can have multiple beliefs one thing that you all are supposed to do is that you are living ethically and with social harmony to so ethical living honi chahiye along with social harmony ye cheeze jo hai they are said along with the religious tolerance but no sudden uh, sort of a uh, talk about that only one supreme being is supposed to be uh, puja jayega worshiped theek hai next up next question that we have is with regards to coleridge's work 
which character created by Coleridge makes the following account of her harrowing experience. Five warriors seized me, yes, to mourn me, even me, a maid forlorn. They choked my cries with force and fright and tied me on a palfrey white. Who here in these lines is trying to talk about her blunder wala experience with the five warriors? The right answer is option A here, Geraldine jo hai. And where can we find this character of Geraldine? We can find this character in Coleridge's work, poem named Christabel. This was a poem in which we see Geraldine jo hai as a character, she appears, right? So, it is a long narrative poem. It's a poem, okay? Long narrative poem hai ye by Coleridge, right? And when was it published? It was published in the year, agar hum baat kare, to parts mein, uh, note down kare baaki cheeze. It was published, Christabel, two parts mein it came. First part was published in the year, seven, written in the year 1797 and the second in the year 1800. 1800 में लिखा गया था, ठीक है? Even though, uh, अगर मैं आपको बताऊँ, interesting fact that Coleridge intended to write more parts about this particular poem. Because in the poem in itself, we see an ending which is ambiguous. Christabel की जो ending है ना, वो ambiguous है. We don't get to see like what really happened at the end, ठीक है? Ending इसकी ambiguous है, ठीक है? So, uh, then we have the character who is talking about her harrowed experience? What happens here is this Christabel naam ki character hai. She is a very, uh, uh, she is a lady who is living with her father. One day what happens is that uh, Geraldine naam ki ladki uski life mein aajati hai. Now, yehi experience mein aapko batana chaati hoon that when Geraldine ko, Christabel brings her home, uh, Geraldine tries to tell why, why Christabel is feeling pity on her because of the fact that she is telling her experience ki mujhe panch ladko ne, um, you know, uh, assault karne ki koshish kari. So, of course, she tries to seem lots and lots of afraid because of the experience. So, Christabel brings her home. Geraldine ko change karwati hai, makes her sleep with her, etc. And we also get to see that there are lots and lots of omens. So, I am giving you homework that you can see this work that you can see in this work along with the bad omens which I mentioned because these bad omens as a previous question has been asked in your paper. Right? So, uh, we don't know what happens at the end, right? These omens are given in the particular work which is trying to tell us that something Supernatural is happening. This girl is not a legit girl. Ye Geraldine ek ladki nahi hai. She is maybe koi bhoot preet ya kuch uske saath related Coleridge dikhana cha rahe hain. So that is what we are left with in ambiguously at the ending like what will happen to Geraldine etc. Thik hai? So that is what we see here. So the distressing circumstances that she comes forward with uh, and from basically when she was in the forest. Christabel unko lati hai, explain ya try karti hai ki kya cheeze hui hai, how she can just get better, so on and so forth, okay? So, moving on, next question, what happens to the lock of the hair at the end of the Alexander, at the end of Alexander Pope's work, the rape of the lock, the right answer is option C, that the lock, the rape of the lock, lut, lock jo hai, it turns into a star, right? When was this particular work written? Agar hum rape of the lock ki baat karte hain, let's note down the, some greater details with regards to uh, Alexander Pope. This was a work which was inspired by a true incident. Uh, that Pope had also been a witness to, right? So, rape of the lock jo hai, First of all, it's a mock heroic poem. It's a mock epic, ठीक है? और mock heroic poem, mock epic क्यों? Because just like Milton, Virgil, ठीक है? Horace, अगर हम बात करते हैं, Homer की बात करते हैं, 
we see that their works were so much so longer including the grandeur of what they were trying to express the characters were very well matlab lekin unke epic poems hoti thi so why this has been given the name mock epic because it is mocking the form of epic how come because this story is about a girl named belinda whose lock of hair is chopped off by some lord petre and how that two families they fall into some sort of a dispute over this trivial matter right to agar hum virgil ki baat karte hain virgil ki aeneid ki baat karte hain milton ki baat kar lete hain we try to talk about paradise lost was also an epic poem written by milton in 1667 in 10 books 1674 in 12 following virgil's aeneid ye sari cheeze hum purani classes mein discuss kar chuke hain right so when milton wrote it and based it on virgil's aeneid description of 12 books etc milton ne bhi to bahut likhwai right so agar hum dekhte hain if we see epic is supposed to be showing character situations which are very much serious in nature the fall of man if you remember but here the rape of the lock the chopping of the lock right which is a very trivial matter so pope jo the is point of time pe he was trying to mock the uh frivolities he was trying to mock the vanities and the pretentiousness of the people during the century during the 18th century right during the age of queen anne right so other important works jo hain unko other important details likhenge first time when it was published when it was first published it was published anonymously it was first published anonymously in in lintots magazine lintots tot lintots miscellaneous poems and translations first tab publish hui thi theek hai 1712 mein first publication happened in the year 1712 then second publication happened in 1714 second what was different from first edition here second edition mein likha tha written by mr pope written by mr pope theek hai and it was ठीक है फाइव कैंटोज में डिवाइडेड थी फाइव कैंटोज में डिवाइडेड थी 1712 माले वाले में इट वाज डिवाइडेड इनटू टू कैंटोज सिर्फ दो कैंटोज में लिखी गई थी ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट पीसेस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन है देन केम द नेक्स्ट टाइम 1717 व्हिच वाज द फाइनल एडिशन which was final edition published now this as a separate question has also been asked what was different edition of clarissa's speech clarissa ki speech add kar di thi on good humor in the final edition of the rape of the lock final edition of the rape of the lock certain other pieces of information jaise ki agar main baat karu isme bahut sari images aapko dekhne ke liye milengi specifically the image of sylphs theek hai if supernatural imagery use karte hain pope jo hai yahan pe right so we see that supernatural imagery ki agar hum baat karte hain that was inspired by ye jo sylphs आती हैं दे आर इंस्पायर्ड बाय फ्रेंच रोजी क्रूशियन नॉवल फ्रेंच रोजी क्रूशियन नॉवल नेम्ड कॉमते दे गबालिस कॉमते दे गबालिस राइट एंड ऑल्सो इफ वी सी पोप ने ना एक और वर्क लिखा था अ की टू द लॉक पोप ऑल्सो रोट नोट डाउन करो यहां पे पोप 
also wrote a key to the lock which was a work that he wrote in the year 1714 a humorous warning warning to not take the poem seriously theek hai seriously nahi leni hai and ye work jo tha key to the lock this was written under a pseudonym pseudonym matlab nakli naam ke under inhone likha tha what was the pseudonym that pope used here it was esdras barney welt esdras barney welt all right let's move forward to the next question which of the following poems by w b yeats repudiates the sensual world in favor of the artifice of eternity the right answer to this question is option c here which is sailing to byzantium where is where is byzantium ashka modern day constantinople here theek hai so if we try to talk about wb yeats the artifice of eternity because through this particular work yeats is trying to talk to us that yes of course we should go and sail back to byzantium where all the folklore the myths are still there right how would one be feeling under that particular stance that is what that work talks about let's just note down first of all isi ke bare mein likhte hain if we try to talk about under ben balban baki works ke bare mein bhi likhte hain note down under ben balban it was published in the year 1939 ठीक है एंड इट वॉज पब्लिश पॉस्ट्यूमसली इट वॉज पब्लिश पॉस्ट्यूमसली पॉस्ट्यूमसली मीन्स आफ्टर द डेथ सो छह महीने हो गए थे ये इसकी डेथ को उसके बाद ये रिलीज करी गई थी बाय हिज सिस्टर ठीक है देन वी हैव अमंग स्कूल चिल्ड्रन अमंग स्कूल चिल्ड्रन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी एट इन द ईयर नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी एट कौन सी कलेक्शन में इन द कलेक्शन नेम्ड द टावर इन द कलेक्शन नेम्ड द टावर उसमें आई थी ठीक है एंड आफ्टर लॉन्ग साइलेंस 1932 इन द बुक इन द बुक वर्ड्स फॉर म्यूजिक पहाप्स and other poems right so these are the details with regards to this work here note down एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्क अगर हम बात करते हैं सेलिंग टू बाइजेंटियम दिस वर्क ऑफ डब्ल्यू बी ये वॉज फर्स्ट पब्लिश इन द कलेक्शन ऑक्टूबर ब्लास्ट इन दर नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी सेवन ठीक है नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी सेवन में इट वॉज फर्स्ट पब्लिश इन द कलेक्शन ऑक्टूबर ब्लास्ट एंड सेकेंड टाइम जब ये पब्लिश हुआ था इट वॉज पब्लिश इन द कलेक्शन द टावर ठीक है द टावर और राइट तो ये इसके वर्क में हमें यही गोइंग बैक टू द टाइम राइट गोइंग बैक 
to the time wherein we can talk about and we can think of you know uh, things with regards to the folklores and the legends. Moving forward to the next question, which of the following poems by Shima Sini is dedicated to the Irish po poet Paul Muldoon? The right answer is option D here. The work Vigin, the poem Vigin was described or dedicated, sorry, to Irish poet Paul Muldoon. Because Shima Sini himself was one such person who um, somewhere or the other was writing from the Irish purview. So, all things are written with regards to the Irish poet Shima Sini. All the poems, if we look at all the poems, they were published in the collection called published in the collection called Station Island. Station Island in the year 1984. Okay? And Seamus Heaney, he had won the Nobel Prize in Literature in the year 1995. This is really very important point. This is an important point. Okay? Important point. All right. Next question, let us move forward to. The next question says that in the Canterbury Tales, who has a red face full of sores? Now, I remember telling you all greater details about Canterbury Tales, so on and so forth. I also told you that, uh, you know, Chaucer intended to write 120 tales, but this work remains unfinished, right? Or unfinished to hai hi hai, we also get to see that this particular work of his tries to talk about how the pilgrims uh, from one place, specifically the Tabardin, waha se apni uh, pilgrimage shuru karte hai towards the, um, uh, you know, this uh, Archbishop Thomas Beckett ki cathedral mein, they are going to go and pay homage, right? So, two stories jate ho sunani, two stories jate ho sunani hai, that is what is there. Host is Harry Bailey. Chaucer also tells two tales, tale of Sir Topas and the tale of Melibi. Okay? Now, if we talk general prologue, ki baat karte hai, we talk about the general prologue. I have asked you guys to read about the general prologue and the important tales. General prologue, mein, Chaucer has described the character descriptions which we have seen. Like if we get to see uh, the knight, the knight who uh, he is wearing some sort of a tunic and that tunic is still, I mean, that is a little bit of a tunic and what is it? It is a jungle which is still telling us that he has still come from some sort of a war or a pilgrimage, right? Secondly, we get the yeoman, yeoman jo hai, wo unko, uh, you know, he is one such person who is under the night unki service ke liye. Then we have the squire, squire is the son of, the son of the knight. And Squire, what he tries to do, he believes in the romantic tales, so on and so forth. Or romantic tale, he sunata hai, right? Then we move forward with other uh, characters such as the wife of Bath. She has gap in her teeth. She has married five times. Ek kaan se behri hai wo because of her husband. When unhone ek book jala di thi apne husband Jankin ki, J-A-N-K-Y-N. Jankin ki ek book jala di thi. Us wajah se Jankin ne ek zor se unko chanta mara tha. Because of which she is deaf from one ear. And she is also, she claims to be really very experienced because of the five marriages that she had. Okay? Also, she is having wide hips. Right? The friar, friar knew the tavern well in every town. The monk loves hunting and riding horses. Right? Uh, the pardoner, parson, plowman. Okay? So, if we talk about parson and plowman, ki, these are the only two characters who are having the Christian values totally shown there. So, whatever you are saying, write it a little bit. Okay? Okay, now we are telling who is having a face full of sores. The right answer to this question is option A here. The summoner has a face red with sores. I will utter the lines here. His face was red as a cherubim, full of sores like a leaper he had. If I talk about the shipman, so how has the shipman been described? Shipman is a shipman from Dartmouth. Okay? He has been described as a character who is very, very rough and tough. Okay? 
एंड ही हैज एन एबिलिटी नेविगेशन शिपमैन है तो उसको पता है कि सीज में शिप्स को कैसे नेविगेट करते हैं एटसेट्रा ठीक है एंड ही इज नॉट एट ऑल ऑफ रेड इफ ही इज एंगेज इन एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ पायरेसी तो वट वट टू बी सी एज द लाइन्स हियर ही वॉज अ गुड फेलो एंड अ बोल्ड वन एंड वेल ही न्यू द हैवेंस माउथ देन वी हैव द यो मैन नाइट का सर्वेंट है डिपिक्टेड एज अ स्किल्ड आर्चर एंड अ फॉरेस्टर ये चीज इनकी बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है ये वैसे भी पूछी गई है फॉरेस्टर है एंड फ्रॉम हेड टू टो हेड टू टो ही इज वेरिंग ग्रीन एवरी थिंग इज ग्रीन ही इज हैविंग पीक ऑफ फेदर्स एज वेल अपने जो वो होते हैं ना तीर होते हैं उनमें भी पीक ऑफ फेदर्स लगाए हुए हैं ठीक है सो ग्रीन कोट बाउ a young man had he and he was clad in coat and hood of green then we have the reeve reeve is a steward manager of the estate old hai thin hai shrewd hai theek hai and he is somewhere or the other corrupt as well right so if we try to talk about his description how has he been described his hair was shorn as a priest's and it was long and he was a carpenter by his craft the tale of the reeve एंड रीव uh, जो टेल सुनाता है दैट इज रियली वेरी फनी रीव और मिलर की टेल एक एक बड़ा ही उसको बोलते हैं इट इज नोन एज अ टर्म कॉल्ड अ फैब्ल्यू इट इज अ फैब्ल्यू वट इज अ फैब्ल्यू फैब्ल्यू इज अ टेल विच हैज सम सॉर्ट ऑफ सेक्शुअल इनोएंडो यानी डबल मीनिंग बात की गई है तो चौसर ने अपने वर्क में फैब्ल्यू यूज करा था एज अ यू नो to tell the characters etc. so जो रीव है यानी कार्पेंटर है वो मिलर के बारे में यानी आटा चक्की पीसने वाले के ऊपर तंज कसता है एंड देन द मिलर ऑल्सो रिवर्ट्स बैक बाई यू नो टेलिंग अ स्टोरी अबाउट अ कार्पेंटर एंड हिज वाइफ हु इज हैविंग एन एक्स्ट्रा अफेयर समवेयर ठीक है फैब्ल्यू है दैट इज देयर ऑल्सो आई वॉन्टेड टू टॉक टू यू अबाउट द प्रायरस द प्रायरस हम लोग ने पहले भी किसी क्लास में क्वेश्चन को डील करा था विद रिगार्ड्स टू कैंटबरी टेल्स शी इज वेरिंग अ ब्रोच विद अ लैटिन फ्रेज जिसके ऊपर क्या लिखा हुआ है अमोर विंचित ओमनिया विच ट्रांसलेट्स विच इज लैटिन फ्रेज विच ट्रांसलेट्स टू लव कंकर्स ऑल शी इज वन सच लेडी हु वुड इवन नॉट लेट अ मोरसिल you know stain her lips or anything she would just eat with so much etiquette and she would uh, she knew french she knew how to talk in french etc and she would pick that morsel ek niwala leti thi aur usko aise kuch bhi khati thi aise leke jati thi ki she would just wipe her lips off aram se along with that right so she was such a lady and she would cry if she would see a mouse trapped इन अ केज और इन ये छोटे से ट्रैप में फंसा हुआ देख के तो शी टू क्राई लाइक एनी थिंग एंड शी हैड दो हाउंड भी बैक एट हर प्लेस दो हाउंड भी रखे हुए थे इन्होंने अपने घर पे सो दैट इज वट वी सी एज द प्रायरस सो जनरल बिलो एटलीस्ट द इम्पॉर्टेंट कैरेक्टर्स दे आर वेरी मच इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर यू ऑल टू नोट डाउन स्पेशली अलॉन्ग विद द टेल्स दैट दे हैव टोल्ड देन इन जॉनथन स्विफ्ट इज वर्क गलिवर्स ट्रेवल्स गलिवर रिफर्स टू विलियन डैम्पियर the famous writer of two voyages as his cousin option c is the right answer option c is the right answer uh he uses the line he uses and says that i had a cousin in a way part 1 gulliver's travels ke travels ke part 1 chapter 1 mein hame ye dekhne ke liye milta hai ki william dampier ka as a cousin mention hua hai he says i am a cousin to a man who hath been long in the east now within the context i would try to tell you guys william dampier english literature mein is an important name with regards to writing about the voyages so william dampier ne two main voyages jo thi wo kari thi right and that is why now gulliver is traveling to different parts of the world he is also going on certain voyages right so that is why he is uh, saying एक कॉमन लाइन ड्रॉ करके कि आई एम ऑल्सो एन एक्सप्लोर जस्ट एज डैम्पियर वॉज राइट सो दैट इन दैट वे ही इज ट्राइंग टू ड्रॉ पैरल एंड कॉल हिम हिज कजिन ना अदर इंपॉर्टेंट डिटेल्स रिलेटेड टू गलिवर्स ट्रेवल्स गलिवर्स ट्रेवल्स इसका फुल टाइटल full title please see because it's really very full that i will not be able to note it down here 
I will just be telling you, it was published in the year 1726, right, by Jonathan Swift, of course, we know. And it is divided into different parts, like we have part 1, which is titled as A Voyage to Lilliput, where he sees people who are very much little. Lilliput, part 2. A voyage to Brobdignag. Brobdignag is an anti village to Lilliput. Brobdignag. Then we have part 3. Part 3 A voyage to Laputa. Laputa. Balni Barbi. Lagnig. Lagnik, Glub Drub Drib, and Japan. And part four and the last one A Voyage to the Land of Harmoniums. Right. So, homoniums, horses, or horses, pe masters hai in this particular land, and yahoos are humans who are serving those horses. So, it is a different woe. All right. That is it with regards to Gulliver's travels. And it was a satire, though. Okay. Jonathan Swift used to write satires. Next up, next question, who among the following is not a character in Pride and Prejudice? What is the right answer to this question? The right answer to this question is option C here, Miss Bates. Miss Bates is not a character in Pride and Prejudice. Then what, in which work she is a character? She is a character in Jane Austen's novel, Emma. Okay? Miss Bates is a character in Emma by Jane Austen and this particular work Emma was published in the year 1815. 1815 mein aaya tha. Emma Woodhouse, we have talked about the opening lines of this particular work as well in the one of the previous lectures. Austen ki ye semi-autobiographical novel hai wherein we see she begins, I am going to take a heroine whom no one but myself will much like. She introduces the character as in the first sentence, Emma Woodhouse, handsome, clever and rich, with a comfortable home and disposition and a happy disposition, had lived nearly 21 years in the world with very little to distress or vex her. Right? These are the opening lines of the novel. So, this work is somewhere or the other semi-autobiographical. On the other hand, the other three are the characters in Pride and Prejudice. When was Pride and Prejudice published? It was published in the year 1813. This one was published, right? Wherein we see Miss Bingley, Mr. Collins, Mr. Darcy, Mr. Darcy who is going to fall in love with Elizabeth, right? At the end of the particular work, right? Or is key opening lines kya hai? Pride and Prejudice ki? Ye bhi aayu in aapke paper mein. All right. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. Right? The main wife, a single man would be in search of a wife and how this entire thing is revolving in the novel. Because Jane Austen um, was uh, born during the time period jab yaha pe regency ka time chal raha tha, 1811 se 1820. I think George the Fourth was ruling here. And during this particular time period, because why was he ruling? Because George the third, uh, George the third, jo the, George the fourth ke father, he was considered insane. His, he was not feeling mentally stable. So George the fourth took the time uh, to be the regent of the country during that time period. Austin was time ki hai because ye alag usme question bhi pucha gaya tha PYQs mein, that Jane Austen was writing during which period? She was writing during the regency period, right? So George the fourth took the throne as a regent for some time from 1811 to 1820 ke aas paas mein, 
एंड uh, उस टाइम पे बड़े सिंपल चीजें लिखते थे रोमांस एटसेट्रा को इनहेंस करके दिखाया जाता था ठीक है सो ऑप्शन सी इज द राइट आंसर व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इमेजेस इज नॉट अ पार्ट ऑफ ऑर्डेंस पोम इन मेमोरी ऑफ डब्ल्यू बी ईट्स राइट आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी हियर मेमोरी स्कैटरिंग लाइक द बीज्स इज नॉट एट ऑल एन इमेज बीइंग यूज्ड इन ऑर्डेंस पोम इन मेमोरी ऑफ डब्ल्यू बी ईट्स राइट सो इन मेमोरी ऑफ डब्ल्यू बी ईट्स ऑर्डन ने लिखी थी it was dedicated to yeats of course as the name suggests so it's some sort of an elegy right 1939 mein this particular work because yeats also passed away in 1939 we just saw with one of the poems among school uh, school children ya under ben balban jab hum likh rahe the to under ben balban 1939 mein after 6 months of yeats's death it was published right so it is also an elegy right इट्स एन एलर्जी फॉर्म क्या है एलर्जी किसी मरे की डेथ के ऊपर मोर्न करते हुए दे आर राइटिंग अ पीस ऑफ पोएट्री दैट इज नोन एज एलर्जी जस्ट गिव मी अ ब्रेक लाइक आई जस्ट हैव सम वॉटर और राइट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इन द ओपनिंग बुक ऑफ द प्रोल्यूड In the opening of the prelude, Wordsworth mentions famously that he was fostered alike by dash and dash. Pick out the right pair. The right answer is option B here, D and B, which means that first of all, क्या आएगा? पहले D आएगा. That is beauty and fear. Beauty and fear is the right answer to this question now coming back to the information related to the prelude here right because this has been asked in your paper the full title of the prelude is or subtitle or growth of a poet's mind ye pucha gaya hai alag se bhi question growth of a poet's mind is the subtitle poets find an autobiographical poem ye full title hai right so this work was originally written in the year 1805 mein written hua tha ye pucha gaya hai kyunki and 1850 mein posthumously published hua tha theek hai so 1805 written and uh, you know criss cross the digits 1850 mein it was published now remember ye prelude was going to be william wordsworth was planning to write a three part work jiska introduction jo tha was supposed to be the prelude then there was this another work the excursion that was supposed to be the second part and the third part of it was supposed to be the recluse the entire three part work was to be titled as the recluse jiska introduction was the prelude the second part was the excursion right and then the third one we have is the recluse so agar hum ye three part word recluse ki baat karte hain it's an unfinished work बिकॉज दीज थ्री पार्ट व दिस पार्ट वॉज रिटर्न कंप्लीटली ये पार्ट पूरे नहीं लिखे गए थे ठीक है ये पार्ट जो है पूरे नहीं लिखे गए थे सेकेंड पार्ट वॉज ऑल्सो रिटर्न लिटल कंप्लीटली ये कंप्लीट हो गया था ये भी कंप्लीट था दिस वन वॉज इन कंप्लीट सो दी इंटायर तो इंटायर वर्क जो अगर हम बात करते हैं ये थ्री पार्ट वाला इट वॉज अनफिनिश्ड राइट इंटायर वर्क वॉज अनफिनिश्ड आई जस्ट रीड द लाइन्स आउट योर Fair seed time had my soul, and I grew up fostered alike by beauty and by fear. ठीक है? That is what we have noted down as the answer here. Option B here, D and B. Next question. This Byron work revolves around a wife whose husband is presumed lost at sea, and she takes a lover in his absence. Everybody behaves agreeably on the husband's return. Byron's technical skills in verse is in display here as the work counterpoints the colloquial and the formal identify the work 
the right answer to this question is option C here, Beppo. Beppo ka full title, note down kariye, Beppo. The full title of this is A Venetian Story, Beppo. Subtitle kya hai? A Venetian Story. So, as you know, humko summary to yaan pe pata chal gai. It's about a woman whose husband goes at sea, absent ho jata hai and the, she takes a lover, uski absence mein. Thik hai? So, this is what we have here, Venetian story, 1817 mein likhi gai thi hai, in the year 1817. The other works we have Manfred, Manfred was a drama written by uh, Lord Byron, right, Manfred, it has a subtitle, a dramatic poem, thik hai, although ye drama hai, dramatic poem, it's a closet drama. What do we mean by the word a closet drama? A closet drama is a sort of drama that which is supposed to be read rather than usko perform kiya jaye, theek hai? Wo padhne ke liye bana hota hai. Manfred was written in the year 1816-17. Then we have Don Juan. Don Juan ek bahut badi poem hai written by him here, right? 1819 to 1824 it was written. It's a poem, theek hai? It's an epic poem which is unfinished. 16 out of 17 cantos were finished, which ka matlab hai ki 17th canto jo tha, wo finish nahi ho paya tha. So, Don Juan, we have discussed about that as well. How <clears throat> Byron in his own life has had so many affairs with multiple women as well. So, Don Juan ko, uh, ke through shayad maybe apne character ko he was trying to justify that he was not a womanizer. Don Juan usually in uh, the stories is shown, shown to be a womanizer. But he is trying to po uh, portray a different point of view here that he is not a womanizer, but he is easily seduced by women, right? So that is the work Don Juan for you. Then we have The Bride of Abydos. It's a poem. It's a poem in two cantos. It's a poem in two cantos published in the year 1813. Published in the year 1813. It was written. Alright, moving on to the next question. The life and opinions of Tristram Shandy, gentlemen, is notorious for its many digressions across nine volumes and its failure to deliver a complete autobiography. In which volume does Tristram Shandy finally recount his birth? The right answer to this question is option number A, that is volume 3. Mein. Ye seedha, seedha question agar hum dekhenge, this particular is particular work mein, and this has been considered a work when modernism jo tha tab aaya bhi nahi tha because this work was published in nine volumes in the year 1759 so you see during the age of samuel johnson this particular the age of transition ke time pe ye work jo tha it was published now why why, why am i saying that it was full of uh, why was it called a modern novel as well because of this particular fact digression Lots and lots of digression. Ek cheez chal rahi hoti hai, then dusri ho jati hai, then tu tisri ho jati hai. So, third volume tak to hume pata hi nahi chalta hai that how Tristram is try trying to tell people and recount how he was born. Right? How he was born. So, it is based on the life of Tristram Shandy. This is the full title of the work, The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy. Right? And kisne likhi hai ye? Who wrote this particular work? This was written by Lawrence Stern. Written by Lawrence Stern. That's it. Right. Next up. Match the phrase to the ode. So, we have odes. All the odes are written by whom? We have all the odes which are written by John Keats here. All the odes here are by John Keats. So, we will have to match them up with the right answer. The right answer is option D here. So, A is to 3, Beech and Green, O to a Nightingale, right? A is to 3, B is to 4, Gathering to Autumn, 
C is to two globed peonies in the year, uh, in the ode ode to melancholy, and D is to one green altar ode on a Grecian urn. These are the four odes. Specifically, if we talk John Keats, ki baat kare, John Keats wrote in his life a time period, a year, 1819, in which he wrote, he wrote odes and odes only. Okay? So, if we talk about this, this was first published. If we talk about odes on a Grecian urn, ki baat karte hai, this was first published. This is urn, U-R-N. This was first published anonymously. Note down certain important details. Ode on a Grecian urn, five stanzas ki poem hai. Ode matlab addressed, kisko addressed hai to the Grecian urn, right? It was first published anonymously. First published anonymously in Annals of the Fine Arts of 18. In Annals of the Fine Arts of 1819. Of 1819. Right? And this is the line: hai, Beauty is truth, truth, beauty. Beauty is truth, comma, truth, beauty. Right? That is all you need on earth and all you need to know. The second one we have. Hamar pas or kon si hai? O to melancholy, O to nightingale, O to melancholy, melancholy, nightingale, nightingale, O on indolence, indolence yani laziness, O on indolence. Ode to Psyche, Psyche the goddess of, the goddess of Psyche, ठीक है, Psyche, ये सारी जो थी, they were published in Great Odes of 1819, ठीक है, and then we have Ode to Autumn, this was published in the year 1820, 1820 में ये पब्लिश की गई थी इन अ वॉल्यूम इंक्लूडिंग कीट्स की पोम थी लामिया जो हमने करी हुई है इन वन ऑफ द क्लासेस लामिया एंड द ईव ऑफ सेंट एग्नेस सेंट एग्नेस का माना जाता था दैट सेंट एग्नेस की ईव पे इफ अ वुमन प्रेज फॉर हर लवर टू बी हर मैरिज पार्टनर सो दैट थिंग हैपेंस उस टाइम पे ठीक है सो ईव ऑफ सेंट एग्नेस That's it. All right. So next question, the second part of Pilgrim's Progress deals with the pilgrimage of Christian's wife, Christiana. Okay, Christiana. She has a companion and a guide in this journey. Pick out the pair's name from the following list. Patience, tender heart, mercy, great heart. What is the right answer that she has as companions? C and D, and yani mercy and great heart, jo hai. These are the people who are the companion on her journey. So, we have talked about, let's just note down the full title. Full title stands here, The Pilgrim's Progress. Progress from this world. To that which is to come, which is to come, 1678 mein likhi it was a Christian allegory, okay, how a Christian should be le leading his life, that's it, so a Christian, true Christian ki journey hai, right, true Christian ki journey hai, also, also, if we try to talk about the writer here, writer kaun the by the way? John Bunyan the. One more thing with regards to John Bunyan is, John Bunyan also wrote his autobiography, which was spiritual autobiography. A spiritual autobiography of Bunyan. Kya naam tha uska? Grace abounding to the chief of sinners. Grace 
ये क्योंकि पूछा गया क्वेश्चन ग्रेस अबाउंडिंग टू द चीफ ऑफ सिनर्स शॉर्ट में इसको ग्रेस अबाउंडिंग भी बोल देते हैं दिस वॉज अ स्पिरिचुअल ऑटोबायोग्राफी ऑफ जॉन जॉन बनियन ऑफ जॉन बनियन राइट Moving on to the next question, which of the following characters finds that complete happiness is illu elusive, and that while you are making the choice of life, you neglect to live. You neglect to live. Right answer is option B. Rasselas in uh, Samuel Johnson's work, Rasselas. Now, Rasselas was a work which, interestingly, ऐसा हुआ था that Samuel Johnson ने Rasselas जो था it was written in one week written in one week to pay for his mother's funeral apni mamma ke sanskar ke liye he had to write a work to earn money right so he wrote what is the full title the other details with regards to that full title goes like the history of Rasselas, Rasselas, comma, the Prince of Abyssinia. Okay, this was the full title. This was the full title. When was it written? Or is ko or or naam se bhi jana jata hai. It was also known by another name, the Prince of Abyssinia. सब टाइटल और टेल दोनों सेम वर्क्स ही हैं ठीक है 1759 में इट वाज फर्स्ट पब्लिश्ड राइट 1759 में इट वाज फर्स्ट पब्लिश्ड एंड व्हाट वाज द वर्किंग टाइटल द वर्किंग टाइटल कि जब लिख रहे थे तब इसको क्या नाम दिया हुआ था बुक को द वर्किंग टाइटल वॉज द चॉइस ऑफ लाइफ एज यू कैन सी फ्रॉम द कोर्ट इट सेल्फ दैट वी हैव जस्ट रेड इन द क्वेश्चन द चॉइस ऑफ लाइफ दिस इज दैट वन द अदर ऑप्शन उनको डिस्कस कर लेते हैं वी हैव लवलेस इन सैम्यूल रिचर्डसन क्लैरिसा कैरेक्टर है ठीक है क्लैरिसा का फुल टाइटल लिखिए क्लैरिसा और द हिस्ट्री ऑफ अ यंग लेडी Young lady, right? This is it goes. इससे भी लंबा टाइटल है लेकिन इतने नाम से ही जाना जाता है दिस इज अब टाइटल फ्रॉम विच इट इज नोन इट वॉज रिटन बाय सैम्यूल रिचर्डसन बाय सैम्यूल रिचर्डसन पैमिला वाले and what sort of a novel it is it is an epistolary novel. epistolary means a novel in the form of letters. ठीक है पिस्टुलरी नॉवेल पब्लिश इन द ईयर 1748 देन वी हैव द एक्सपेडिशन ऑफ हम्फ्री क्लिंकर द एक्सपेडिशन ऑफ हम्फ्री क्लिंकर बाय टॉबियस मॉलेट इट वाज पब्लिश इन द ईयर 1771 ठीक है बाय टॉबियस मॉलेट एंड इट वाज अ पीकारेस्क नॉवल पीकारेस्क मींस पीकारेस्क वर्ड हैज बीन डिराइव्ड फ्रॉम अ स्पेनिश वर्ड पिकारो स्पेनिश वर्ड पिकारो व्हिच मींस अ रोग ठीक है जो घुमक्कड़ बेफालतू घूमते रहते हैं उसके ऊपर है ये ठीक है The expedition of Humphrey Clinker. The next one, the last one, the man of feeling, Henry Mackenzie. 
1771 by Henry Mackenzie was a novel was a novel of sensibility emotions ki theek hai note down that's it note it down please next question you are your words your listeners see written on your face the poems they hear like letters carved in a tree's bark the sights and sounds of solitudes endured these are the lines of a poem by dash on the death of dash kiski lines kiske upar likhi gayi hain the right answer is option c these are the lines by stephen spender on the death of w h auden right answer is these lines are from a poem named auden's funeral by stephen spender of course published in the year 1985 theek hai 1985 mein ye aayi thi Stephen Spender on W. H. Auden, Auden's funeral was the name of the poem. Why does Father Dolan publish, uh, sorry, punish Stephen with the pandy bat in Joyce's portrait of the artist as a young man? क्यों मारा जाता है? Right answer is option B here. Stephen is not doing his work because his glasses are broken. So first of all, portrait of an artist is a young man. किसने लिखी है? कब लिखी गई है? This is a debut novel of our modern writer James Joyce. James Joyce की debut novel है ये. Debut novel है ये. And it was published in the year 1916. It is famously known as a genre which is known as constal roma it's a constal roma what do we mean by that jaise hamara bildungs roma is associated with coming of age na of a particular character constal roma is the growth of an artist the coming of age of an artist theek hai that is what this word means so this particular work is named as that right uh, ye jo work tha 1904 mein already james joyce ne 1904 mein 1904 mein joyce ne began kar diya tha ye work at that particular time period it was known as stephen hero तो ये अलग से क्वेश्चन आया था कि व्हाट वाज अ प्रीक्वल प्रीक्वल टू पोर्ट्रेट ऑफ एन आर्टिस्ट इज अ यंग मैन इज स्टीफन हीरो ठीक है बिगैन करा था बट अबैंडन्ड एंड एज अ न्यू चैप्टर एज अ न्यू नॉवेल इट वाज लेटर ऑन पब्लिश्ड एज पोर्ट्रेट ऑफ एन आर्टिस्ट एज अ यंग मैन ठीक है अच्छा क्वेश्चन में पूछा गया है कि फादर uh, फादर डोलान जो है वाई ही पनिशेज स्टीफन विद द पैंडी बैट ही इज यू नो हैविंग ही इज गिविंग द चिल्ड्रेन अ लैटिन लेसन ठीक है और वो काम नहीं कर रहा है स्टीफन जो है वो काम नहीं कर रहा है वाई बिकॉज इज ग्लासेज आर ब्रोकन बट फादर डोलान थिंग्स एट दैट जस्ट एन एक्सक्यूज सो ही हिट्स हिम विद द पैंडी बैट उनको लगता है एक्सक्यूज मार रहा है Next question: From which source did Swift get the idea of writing verses on the death of Doctor Swift? ये verses on the death of the Doctor Swift का epigraph ही यही है. The writing is uh, the answer is after a reading from a mag of a magazine by La Rochefort, right? La Rochefort का एक इन्होंने magazine पढ़ा था. उसमें इन्होंने Doctor Swift ने यानी Jonathan Swift ने अपनी ही death के ऊपर a verses on the death of Doctor Swift जो है, he wrote this particular work. राइट ऑन हिज ओन डेथ 1732 में इट वॉज कंप्लीटेड 1732 में इट वॉज कंप्लीटेड एंड व्हेन वॉज इट पब्लिश्ड पब्लिश इन द ईयर 1739 1739 में इट वॉज पब्लिश्ड राइट 
conversation with John Gay, no. While talking, taking a walk near Dublin State Dreams Graveyard, no. अगर आप इनका work ही पढ़ते हो ना, ये घर जाके भी अगर आप देखोगे, you read verses on the death of Dr. Swift. उसके ऊपर ही ये लिखा हुआ है, mention है that from a maxim inspired through a maxim by La Rochefort. ठीक है? ठीक है? और क्या क्या maxim क्या दिया हुआ है? In the adversity of our best friends, we find something that doth not displease us. This is a maxim that he reads by Rochefort, right? Which from which he inspired to uh, he got inspired to write verses on the death of Dr. Swift. Next up, we move forward to the question related to the journals. Which English journal announced that it was principally intended for the use of politic persons who are so public spirited as to neglect their own affairs to look into transactions of state? But fail to live up to this and amused readers. मतलब ये इसके लिए बना था लिखने के लिए लेकिन चला नहीं. So failed and rather started writing to amuse the readers with accounts of gallantry, pleasure and entertainment. The right answer to this question is option B here. Tatler. इसकी chronology periodicals की please याद कर लेनी है सबने. The Tatler was found in the year 1709 by Richard. स्टील रिचर्ड स्टील ने इसको फाउंड करा था एंड इट वाज पब्लिश्ड इसके अंदर पेन नेम क्या था आइसैक बिकेस्टाफ जो भी लिखता था आइसैक बिकेस्टाफ एंड टाटलर यूज्ड टू यूज्ड टू कम थ्राइस अ वीक ट्यूसडेज थर्सडेज एंड सैटरडेज मैंने इसको खुद के लिए टीटीएस करके याद करा था Thrice weekly aati thi ye. Thik hai? Moving on to the other option, the spectator. The spectator came in the year, ye is ki duration hai, 1711, say 1714. Founded by Addison. Addison and Steele. Both of them found this particular work. Thik hai? It was also published thrice weekly. Thik hai? Next up, we have the next question, the Daily Quarant. The Daily Quarant 1702 was the first daily British newspaper. And then we have the review. Alak se bhi iska poochha gaya 1704 by Daniel D. Four. 1704 to 1713 tak chala tha by Daniel D. Four. Robinson Crusoe wale. Daniel D4, right? That's it. Right? Next question. Pick out two Austin heroines from the following list who are right minded but neglected in the beginning but gradually are acknowledged to be correct by the characters who have previously looked down on them. The right answer is B and D. That is option B is the right answer. B and D. That is Anne Elliot and Fanny Price. Agar am baat karte hai, if we try to talk about Fanny Price, Fanny Price is ऑस्टिन के मैंसफील्ड पार्क में आती है ये मैंसफील्ड पार्क के नॉवेल में आती हैं फैनी प्राइस इज इग्नोर्ड इन द नॉवेल एस इट हैज बीन शोर्ड ठीक है बट लेटर ऑन स्पेशली उनकी जो खुद की आंट है मिसेस नॉरिस शी इग्नोर्स हर शी डज नॉट वैल्यू हर फीलिंग्स एट्सेट्रा बट लेटर ऑन इन द कोर्स ऑफ to uh, you know Fanny Price in some way or the other and then we have Anne Elliot. Anne Elliot is a character in Persuasion by Jane Austen. Emma Woodhouse Emma mein hai. Elizabeth Bennet is in Pride and Prejudice.
ठीक है ऐसे ही एन के साथ भी होता है शी इज ऑल्सो वेरी मच क्लियर हेडेड इमोशनल एज वेल राइट बट थ्रू द फैक्ट दैट शी इज बिकॉज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट शी इज यंगर सो शी इज लुक डाउन अपॉन बिकॉज ऑफ हर एज एज वेल सो नो बडी टेक्स अर सीरियसली बट लेटर ऑन ऑल्सो बिकॉज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट शी ब्रोक अप हर इंगेजमेंट विद वेंटवर्थ बट लेटर ऑन कैप्टन वेंटवर्थ ही उनको जो है पसंद करने लगते हैं थ्रू आउट द वर्क इट सेल्फ वी गेट टू सी दैट next up next question we have identify the story from which em foster wrote the libretto for its opera version the right answer is option c here billy bud billy bud jo hai is naam ka ek novel bhi hai by herman melville herman melville has wrote down a particular novel by the same name so when it comes to such questions which which you are going to deal in your question paper in sab cheezon ko bhi dhyan rakhiye ki a vision of judgment kiska hai the vision of judgment kiska hai a tale of two tubs kiska hai the tale of two tubs kiska hai right so let's just note down अब लिब्रेटो क्या होता है पहले लिब्रेटो की डेफिनेशन लिख लो लिब्रेटो होता है द टेक्स्ट ऑफ एन ओपरा इट इज द टेक्स्ट ऑफ एन ओपरा ओपरा जो परफॉर्म किए जाते हैं ना हार्ट ऑफ डार्कनेस किसका है जोसेफ कॉनराड का है ठीक है देन वी हैव द मैन हु वुड बी किंग द मैन हु वुड बी किंग हार्ट ऑफ डार्कनेस एटीन में आया था द मैन हु वुड बी किंग एटीन एटी एट बाई रडियार्ड किपलिंग by radyard kipling then we have death in venice is by thomas mann in the year 1912 acha billy bird jo tha billy bird opera version literal mein waise ye kiska novel tha it was a novel by herman melville herman melville billy bird herman melville अनफिनिश्ड वर्क था ये दिस वॉज एन अनफिनिश्ड वर्क राइट द फुल टाइटल वॉज बिली बट सेलर दिस वॉज द फुल टाइटल एफ टी ठीक है हार्ट ऑफ डार्कनेस में हमें देखने के लिए क्या मिलता है जोसेफ कॉन्ड्राइड का वर्क है वी गेट टू सी दैट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्क हाउ कोलोनाइजेशन हैज डीपर इम्पैक्ट ऑन पीपल हु आर वर्किंग फॉर देम एज वेल द मैन हु वुड बी किंग इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट वर्क वो भी आपको पढ़ना चाहिए यू शुड रीड द समरी एंड डेथ इन वेनेस एज वेल राइट बाई थॉमस मान बिकॉज थॉमस मान वॉज ऑल्सो नॉबल प्राइज लॉरियट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन एंड द लास्ट वन आई थिंक दैट वी हैव योर इज दैट ब्लेक हैज अ रेयर रेयर stance to provide telling images in arresting phrases this is some sort of an uh, spelling mistake here theek hai match the phrases with the poems that they belong to mind forged manacles uh, these are the works that he has penned down the right answer to this question is option c here that is a3 b4 a3 b4 c1 and d2 right d these are the four poems which are penned down by none other than william blake agar hum the tiger ki baat karte hain the tiger 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 burning bright right so uh, ye wali poem hai unki 1794 mein it was published in songs of experience i'm not going to write the full word exp i have written sick rose in the year 1794 collection songs of innocence and songs of experience dono ikatthe mein hui thi london 1794 mein in songs of experience and the last one we have holy thursday 1794 in both songs of innocence and songs of experience remember i told you in one of the last lectures that songs of innocence and songs of experience ki agar hum baat karte hain 1789 songs of innocence 1794 songs of experience but later on songs of innocence and songs of experience collectively in the year 1794 collection ek hi bana di thi william blake ne to publish those works right so these are fearful symmetry tiger ko bola gaya hai and he has been compared with the lamb as well in the work um the tiger right so you should be reading and william blake was one such person jinko visions aate the he was one such person who was illustrating his own poems by himself right these were several things that we all were supposed to cover 
I think we have reached to the end of this particular session, right? I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, keep on studying. Thank you so much and have a good day. Bye-bye.